Stephen A. Smith is very interested in succeeding Jimmy Kimball. You said Boogie Late Night? ABC, come f with me. <laughs> see that CD, look, look. <laughs> look there you go, right there you go. <laughs> when you get drafted number one, you're going to a sh team. It's simple, get over it. What's the hardest you've been hit in your life? Brian Arakbo, rookie year. These are the red skins. My eyes, my fingers, my toes, my knee, my nuts, hold up. I'm good. <laughs> How many hats do you own? A lot. Is it upward of 100? Easily. All that cool until you got to go through TSA. And I got locked gotcha. up. Gotcha. 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 And I'm sorry if I had to be the one to tell you. Damn. I got the Louis Vuitton and then I got the Gucci. That ain't you. That's a mannequin. Walking billboard. Right. Sometimes them sh talking does get a little personal and get a little wild. So if you won't say it to me after the game, shut the f up. Take your emotions out of it. Which state produces the best athlete talent? Shut I'm up. pissing some people off. And if I'm wrong, next episode, Peggy, I will publicly apologize. Yeah. But I don't see myself apologizing. If you were a plant and someone sprayed you with water, would you moan a little bit? What? what? Welcome to Fourth and One, where I always got it done. Bringing facts by the time for the rising of the sun. Mm. This ain't me in the shotgun. Mm -mm. Holy cow. Watch the four Peggy. He shoots! And he misses. Ah, damn. There you go. The bank's still open. <laughs> this man in front of TV having a whole lot of fun. Peggy! What's good, boo? Let's see what you're wearing. You got your Mashiga going on. I got you got the shit, uh, you know what I'm saying? Shannon Sharp courtside, a uh, flannel. Really slapping them if they try me. Y'all can talk now. <laughs> I don't know what all that talking is. I ain't with all that time wrestling. I'm Action cool. Jackson over here. That cool, man. Yeah, hey, fine. before we get started, Hey, do me a solid, man, and you press that subscribe button to be up to date with all the fourth and one content. Viral moment of the week. First down, Peggy, what we got? Man, we had somebody that came back home, so to speak, this weekend. Man, that was a vibe. They better know they spelling words. I, no, man, listen, down. that's what Good I just raps. told uh, Dino. I was like, bro, these kids. These kids can recite a rap song. Word by word. But can they doggone, do they know their timetables? Man, that's not <laughs> crazy. You look like uh, Muhammad Ali. I seen I like that boogie, boom aye, boogie, boom aye. Man, look, I'm for the people, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying that was a good moment by being back in Charlotte. Um, yeah, man, you know the people, the people love me, and I know, and I love the people. I just want to be a servant, dog. Just to 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 be a a source for hope. Like if I could do it, if I if I did it under my circumstances, you can do it too. Yeah. So with these kids, just giving them a platform to. You know, use their God-given talent in football to, uh, you know, have a safe space and have a safe environment to play. And that's all we wanted to do. And it was a much success. Queen City, you know, you guys showed the king a lot of love, man, and I appreciate that. Be looking for more, more events coming your way soon. And, uh, yeah. So we had Iggy, man, um, said two weeks ago, um, about Kyrie, and, and I'll let you see the video, but he pretty much said, bro, with the, with, the, with the clock going down, who would you have the ball in his hands? And so this was his response. Tie game, playoffs. Who are you most scared of? Kyrie Irving is not even close. Whoa. So wait, you're going with Kyrie now over everybody we've talked about. For the last second shot, I'm going with Kyrie. <laughs> so then, as we've seen against the Denver Nuggets, yeah. First Dallas. We got it even better though. Check this out. This is a poetry of motion. The semi hezzy Oh. Gotta talk about it, man. Kyrie with the lefty. Silky smooth. Like, he's always had that. He brought, like, the element of street ball to the NBA. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? You remember Skip the Malou? Yeah, and one. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, every, everybody wanted, you know what I'm saying, him to kind of whatever. But Kyrie has done it 
and it has been functional. Mm-hmm. You dig what I'm saying? That he got a little hot is, sauce in his package. Oh my goodness! Yeah, he got a little hot sauce. Like we've seen, you know, white chocolate, Jason mm-hmm. Williams. You know, certain things that he did, but everybody's main question is how does that type of style of play translate to the NBA? And Kyrie has shown through his body of work that he's just not a skillful ball handler. He's a skillful basketball player. Mm-hmm. He's he so crafty. Score. Oh, my goodness. Layups. And, like, layups, yeah. we're, we're playing in the game where you think of the NBA, you're talking about the LeBrons, the KD, Stephs. Everybody plays the game completely different. Yeah. Like, you've never probably seen five clips of Kyrie Duncan. Mm-hmm. That's not him. That's not to say he cannot dunk, but he's just not the guy you would expect to dunk. Wow. But he's going to get a bucket. He's going to get you a good up and under. A jelly roll. Woo! Silky. Silky schmooze. A little teardrop. It is one of the things, like, bro, how does your handles – get that skillful. Bro, he got that pack game for sure. Like, it's on string, like, that yo-yo. Bro. That's what the coach used to say, keep it on the yo-yo. And, bro, his, his the way he attacked, his shoes, like, some of his shoes, like, they got to have a solid foundation. Because <laughs> I don't think Kyrie could play in sandals. How oh, nah. vicious his steps are. No you Jesus sandals for him. No, like, you need something no that can give you something. You dig what I'm saying? With some little, I, and that, that's one thing I think about too. Is like, bro, he, he like you said, his base of his shoe got to be wide. Maybe some ankle support or something, but like he just bro. got that. Your ankle support better be on. I fucking mean, with Kyrie. shoe better be tight, <laughs> tight. tight. Double bunny ears, tight. Hey, Swoop loop pool, man, okay. Tight. Yeah, because he got Cause that shit. You better him. be on your p's and q's. The amount of bodies that he done dropped on a basketball court, bro. He got some ooh, bodies on him. Woo. But, man, shout-out to Kyrie, man, just to see where he's came from mm-hmm. and him being in this state of of, of just mm. – like, he don't even have to pick his night. Like, he can pick his nights now. Mm-hmm. He's not oh, asked man. to kind of like – you got Luca. Luca. That's still – oh Like, goodness. bro, it's your night tonight, then boom. Like, that's a silent assassin. And as we get into these in-game playoffs, was the in-season playoff games mm-hmm. and the actual playoffs, bro – that type of dynamic is but Do you going think to... they're going to be able to last in the playoffs, though? That wish loaded now. Yeah, for sure. But that's why we like sports. Yeah. It's not even who's the best team. It's who matches up well. Mm-hmm. Just a note about the standings right now. You got the Mavericks, Phoenix Suns. Yeah. Golden State Warriors and mm-hmm. the Lakers are all battling for that six seed. Yeah, that, that, that West wild. That's the wild, wild West right now. Yeah. We love to see it though, cause it hasn't been like that for a long time. Like that's crazy. Yeah, but here we go. Next clip. I know you heard this around the world. Aaron Donald retired this mm-hmm. week, so that was real big, and so a lot of people was like super shocked. But he made a lot of quarterbacks, you know, think about spending a little more time in the NFL since they don't have to worry about them. Right. This is a video of those sentiments. <laughs> so, Aaron Donald is one of three NFL players to win Defensive Player of the Year award three times. Can you name the other two? It's only three to ever do it. Ever. Two more. Damn, that's hard. Forever. Uh, Lawrence Taylor. Damn, okay. JJ Watt. Okay. You must have looked at the cheat sheet. I mean, I got a little lazy eye. <laughs> no, but that's a big deal. J.J. Watt was a, was a force. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then, obviously, Lawrence Taylor was another force. But when you see the difference, this is the thing. J.J. Watt looks like he can do that because he's such a big guy. Yeah. Lawrence Taylor, when you see how big Lawrence Taylor is and to see his level of impact and dominance, that's another thing. On top of that, Aaron Darnold. Yeah. To see what that young man, that guy, that beast of a person was able to do at his size. He's a problem. You what? remember going up against him? Hell yeah. So what is it like playing against Aaron Donald? Knowing that he on He get side. on you so fast, like bruh, it's 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 almost like a he's a magician. 
He's so tactical with his hands. He's so tactical with, you know, shimmying and getting skinny and using other people's leverage and swim moving. And it's, I remember he hit me. He jumped up to hit me too. <laughs> when we was in LA, this was there, the stadium wasn't born yet. We was playing in the Coliseum. And this was the first year that came from St. Louis. Bruh. <laughs> Dude, it's like, he jumped up, uh, bruh, and hit me about shit. Like, bro, who the fuck? Snot bubble. <laughs> who the hell hit? Which one of y'all just hit? <laughs> Which one of y'all? And just hit? like every he's he really impacts a full game. Yeah. The definition of an impact player. Because when he gets going, he can fuck up a whole game. And shout out to him for an amazing career. Easy, easy, you know. Uh, Hall of Famer, and I thought it would have happened before, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, because I think he mentioned it right after the you know they won the Super Bowl. But this is the thing about the NFL that people don't really understand: it's not just a seasonal sport. Like to be dominant in the NFL, you have to commit for a long time. Yeah, it's not a 180 day sport. This is a 365 day sport, from dieting to training to you know, studying yourself and just being on to be the person that, okay, I know I have to keep getting better and better. So, man, that's wild, man. Cheers yeah. to you, Aaron Donald, to an amazing career and enjoy retirement, my guy. Here we go, next clip. So, RG3 on Justin Fields is next up, man. So, obviously, Justin Fields just got traded from the Chicago Bears to the Steelers. Um, and, you know, it's a lot of stuff with that brewing on. Obviously, as a backup to Russ, is he going to start? Is he a backup? They say he's coming in as the backup, but who knows once the season goes. And then RG3 has some words on Caleb Williams on, like, how he should feel about the Bears after they just treated Justin Fields in this manner. So let's see what he got to say. Caleb Williams should pull a Eli Manning and demand that the Chicago Bears do not draft him number one overall. After everything that's happened with just Justin Fields, can Caleb Williams really look at that and say, you know what? This is the organization that has my best interest at heart and they're going to help develop me into the player that I want to become. Caleb Williams is on record saying that he wants to be legendary. He wants to rewrite history and he wants to be the best that he can possibly be and win the most games he can possibly win. After the Bears took Justin Fields, the 11th pick in the draft, and turned him into a sixth round pick in the 2025 draft by trading him to the Pittsburgh Steelers? Can Caleb Williams really look at that and say, you know what? Yeah, this organization is going to help get me where I want to go. I don't think it's saying that. Eli Manning had power in that 2004 draft. And he let the Chargers know, don't draft me. I don't believe in the direction that your organization is going. And I don't want to play there. He refused to. So this is a loaded question. Number one, let's talk about Justin. Do you think it's a good move and, you know, how you think he would plan out in uh, Pittsburgh? Justin Fields is finding out firsthand that this is a business. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it hasn't been in his favor. And it wasn't up to him to get traded. Like, it was a collision course. It was about to be a train wreck. Hell, his experience there was a train wreck. Uh, he stated, multiple teammates have stated, you know, they wanted Justin to kind of stay, and I think, you know, not just the Chicago Bears, but a lot of organizations are feeling the heat. And you really only got two to potentially three years to show you good. Because the NFL has changed. Mm -hmm. We're not allowing players to develop anymore. We're trying to sell jerseys. We're trying to win football games. We're trying to win the Super Bowl yesterday. So I don't give a damn about developing. You got to already come in able to compartmentalize personal versus mm -hmm. professional. Professional manage a locker room where you are now thrust into a CEO role where you have to manage the owner, yeah, off the field, general manager, head coach, position coach, and players. And for Caleb Williams, that's a tall task. That's a tall order. That's not to say he can't do it. But he must understand what he's getting himself into. Now, to RG3's point, it's like, do you put the feet to the fire 
and you put yourself first because unlike what Eli Manning had, Caleb Williams doesn't have that same type of juice. You Meaning. Know, okay, I'm going to let you develop that. It's not like his name is Caleb Manning. Okay. See what I'm saying? That, that, that. He got a long lineage. You got Arch. Archie okay. Manning. You got Peyton. Peyton Manning. That name alone going to yeah. get you in the dough. Anywhere in the NFL. Yeah. So they got leverage. You don't necessarily even need a sports agent with that type of last name. Yeah. Caleb can't do that. See what I'm saying? Like, he cannot do that. Let's just keep it a big buck. And if you try to do that in this day and age with so much media surrounding that, I wish your motherfucker would say he don't want to be the first pick of the draft or to hold a team contempt to say, like, I don't want to be here. Yeah, all right. see how far that gets you. Yeah, I know. Because the, the, the times have changed. And I'm not saying that he did it just because he was a man. He was like, yo, I don't think Eli Manning in this draft could have done that. When that day comes for Arch Manning, if he sees the day for him to get drafted, as we would expect him to, to, to be, I don't think he would have that same level of bullish. But do you feel like teams are more in control of players now or like Oh, for sure. But even in this even in this realm of like, you know, now athletes can speak out and their voices are more heard, I feel like, but that's why I, I feel like he could do it more now just with the Where are you gonna that, go? Because those teams so you saying this because of the less fewer options of where he can go? Yes, it's a mm, more okay. Back back then, it was a more universal talent that was out, like a running back. The, the state of the running back was different. Running yeah. backs was getting drafted higher back in two thousand four. Now running backs are coming a dime a dozen. Mm -hmm. Now what it has changed that tight end wasn't drafted as high as it is now. You know, where where would Caleb want to go? You want to go to the Giants? Cool. That would be a – battling, my boy. Well, you want to go to the Jets? You can't go there. You ain't playing. you A-Rod there. So you start looking around and say, well, you want to go to Atlanta? We just spent a, 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 a big bag on ours. You want to go to Carolina? We just He's still up in that, that wavelength. Like, we no still got to find years, out how yeah. great he can be. Well, you want to go to Tampa, New Orleans? Not Tampa. Shit, we just paid our guy. <laughs> yeah. New Orleans, uh – I don't know. But the, the, the chances are slim. That's okay. That's what I'm saying. Like, you just don't got... A slim pickings. Opportunity where you're like, yo, I want to go to... I want to go to L.A. To sit behind Matthew Stafford? Justin Herbert? I want to go to Las Vegas. But they don't have the... They can't come get you. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. going to cost them a lot to come get you. <laughs> and are they willing to give to get? Mm -hmm. That's the question. That's are true. are you willing to, like, to get Caleb Williams where Las Vegas is right now? You have to ask yourself, are we willing to give up a star player or some draft picks, future draft picks as well? And you really don't know how he's going to pan out in the NFL. Hello. Now you're, now you're opening up what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. You think what I'm saying? So that's it. I mean, it's a fair point that RG3 made, but it's not a realistic point. Yeah. You know, did the, the Chicago Bears – really develop Justin Fields in the right way? Fuck no. But shit, it ain't for him to complain and bitch about it. It's just like, bro, that's just them the cards that you got dealt. You know what I'm saying? But I feel and, like he in a better spot though now. Is he though? You learn on the rust. Then he's getting that predicament like it ain't really on him if something happens, but it's like You went from a franchise quarterback to a package guy. No. That's, or a future guy, potential. Okay. If Russell Wilson is the starter for 18 weeks and they go to the playoffs. No, oh, yeah. He locked that deal in. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Russell Wilson is on a one-year deal. So, with that being said, it's like, yo, the Steelers are in favor. Well, we got two quarterbacks that we can evaluate, and I'm willing to take that. But if our pencil then starter day one, which they have said, Russell Wilson is the starter. Correct. Does what he has to do, Russ, uh, Justin. We get you in some packages. You and Najee, <whistles> but damn, bro, I was an eleventh pick. You feel me? This was two years ago. Exactly. Yeah. You dig? So, if anything, if I'm Caleb Williams, I'm thinking to myself, "Fuck, 
the NFL has changed. I don't have the luxury to go about it in a Drew Brees type of manner. I don't have the luxury to go in with the Aaron Rodgers type of manner, the Jordan Love type of manner. The, these teams are ready to win now, so I got to get my mind right, and I don't want to create any distractions other than me going into a franchise and me becoming the best football player that I possibly can be. And they're getting them help. With, with the cards that I'm given. Well. And I can't say shit. Because, I mean, I knew it. When you get drafted number one, you're going to a shitty team. It's simple. Yeah. So, get over it. Hopefully, your bank account will make you become happy again. Yeah. But you're here to win, too. So That's true. Let that sizzle in your spirit. Got to turn some. Like Nick Bone Juice. Turn some shit into sugar. Made myself clear, you know, Peggy? Crystal. Here we go. Next clip. Here we go. Second down. Questionable call of the week. Let's see what we got. And we got Gronk's retirement story. It was kind of peculiar how he kind of did this. I was actually traded to the Detroit Lions, and I called up, and I got the phone call, and this was, I was contemplating if I should retire or not about two years ago, and I was like, you just traded me to the Lions. I go, oh, I'm retired. Like, I don't know how that trade can go through, and then two days later, the trade never went through. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they they just, yeah. yeah. You? Yeah, I got traded. I told that story no. before last year. I've never heard that. Yeah, and I was like, oh, no, I'm retired. How can you trade me? <laughs> and I stayed on the Patriots. <laughs> 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 Shit, tight ends could do that. Damn. Caleb, he can't do that. He can't do that? Mm -mm. Not, in, not in today. Not a face of the franchise. No, nah, not today. Because really, what you, what are you going to say to your team? Let's play it out. Okay. I don't want to be a part of the Chicago Bears organization. I want to go to Cleveland. That trade goes through. Boom. They ship Deshaun, whoever, to Chicago. What are you telling the people in your locker room? Prima Donna, you ain't ready to fight. What are you going to say to us? When things get hot, are you going to want to leave? Or if you make a big fuss and you were to stay in Chicago, you ain't even really mm. want to be here. So you in a – You're going to get real sticky, bro. Just, just go on and go on and look at that hill. Strap your boots up tight. Put your sweat on and get to hiking. I mean. That's all you can do. That's what you would want to do as a competitor, too. Because one thing about Chicago that we all know, they ready for a winner now. They haven't had a successful playoff quarterback really since Jim McMahon. Oh, I forgot one. Sexy Rexy. <laughs> Rex mm. Grossman. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Jay Cutler, too. So, for what it's worth... That was 10 years ago, plus 15 years ago. It's and now you had, like, it's time. Like, people are, they, and this is the thing that people and organizations don't understand, or yeah. some of them do. You don't have to win every game, but we just want to have some type of hope. Yeah. Fuck. Give me something. Give me something to scream and holler Fight at. that. You Damn know it. what I mean? Shit. So, Caleb, if you could do that, bro, the world is yours. Just keep building. Just keep stacking your Lego chips, bro. One at a time. One bro. at a time, bro. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough, but you're picked because you can take on that task. Next clip. Stephen A. Um, Jimmy Kimmel might retire after his current contract with ABC. Stephen A. filled in for Kimmel in 2021 and earned positive reviews, drawing 1.7 million viewers. Trending right now. Stephen A. Smith is very interested in succeeding. Jimmy Kimball and ABC's late night TV host. What you think, man? Stephen A. Late night. You said Stephen Boogie Late night. Oh, you said what now? My fellow Americans. Uh huh. I come to you extremely humbled by the fact that you guys would even consider me for this particular opportunity. I mean, I've been doing numbers independent, <laughs> uh, going on three years now, uh, and I'm humbled by that because I have a loving, unwavering support for my fans. Iconic Saga has been the engine to uh, create this unbelievable content for the masses. As I would say on one of my platforms, keep it funky for your asses, but this is fourth and one, and this has got to have it sports. Uh, if anybody uh, should get 
an opportunity not to take any thing away from my good brother Stephen A. Smith, uh, but to uh, I speak Gen Z. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? And uh, I can stay corporate in this world of uh, toxicity. And uh, listen, yeah, what would that look like? Cam Late Night Show. Mm. Killer Cam Late Night Show. Mm. ABC, come fuck with me. <laughs> see that CD look. Look, look there you go right there now. You go. See, and that's the reason. There you go. Nah, that's nah, but shit. <laughs> I think I'd be a worthy, you know what I mean? Who would be your top three guests if you had a late night show that you would want? With the access of ABC? With the access of ABC. Bro, Taylor Swift. Okay. Shit, Dwayne Johnson. Mm. And whoever hot then. There what you the go. Fuck? Like, you got the access to, to, to anybody. To get, like, the right world, now, Craig. The world. Like, hey, man, yeah. I want him. All right, don't worry about it. I know an inside to get him. Like, yeah. And now that platform, they go there to get their shit off. Like, if I'm coming out with a movie, if I'm coming out with an album, if I'm coming out with anything, like, I got to go to the late night show. Boom. Hey. Big as the what? <laughs> mm. Something to consider, though. You know what I'm saying? Swag. The hats will be coming with okay. me. Okay. <laughs> Swag ain't going to be sold separately because I know that's going to be in the bundle pack. It's a package deal. You dig what I'm saying? It's in the it's package. Just, it's, it's a necessity. <laughs> <laughs> You're dripping, bro. You're I dripping. know. I know. Cheers. Just go get your sign. That's <laughs> all. And your mop. You feel me? <laughs> next clip. Man, next up, man. They say if your shot look like this, you just need to lose your media card, man. This dude right here is a current basketball analyst. Uh, and a former son's scout, Amin El Hassan. This is his shot. Now, I don't know what you're scouting if you're shooting like this. Boy, what, what the wrong with your wrist? Look at that. He shoots. He misses. I mean, are like. You doing a layup? Or you bro, doing? like, uh, like that wasn't even pointing to the. <laughs> motherfucker said, what is you scouting? I mean, what you scouting? <laughs> the wrong damn thing. Listen, Girl Scout. <laughs> it don't, it don't, it don't make you any less if you can scout it these days. You know what I'm saying? He know yeah. talent. He may know. He might know what it look like. He might not be the talent. This is the next. I don't know, brother. The, the shot looks broke. If um, you ask me, for the Suns. Yeah, for the Suns, bro. He a former. He a current basketball analyst. I ain't going to take that. I mean, first off, what they tell you? When you first start, when you go into the, to some shoot around, hey, come in, son. That ain't your range. That ain't your he, range. He may be shooting outside his range. I so. mean, he may got to be. Yeah. But the thing is, the effort you put in all this, this, this these leggings, these shooting that's, sleeves. That, them te that's team issues. <laughs> Bruh. That's team issue. Bruh. But damn. God, I would love damn. to see a damn. I was a, almost there. A, a faculty. Uh, game, mm -hmm. like boardroom, Suns versus the Atlanta Hawks. Oh yeah, yeah just yeah. the executive scouts. What that's gonna look like, Peggy? A murder scene, a crime scene, a bunch of bullshit. I mean, tripling, fumbling. With y'all over here, pulling my back, my thigh. Y'all over here scouting I'm these. I'm falling stand. and I can't get up. Man, Looking at face sad. Here we go. Next clip. Yeah, next up, man. We got, and it's a little trash talk segment right here uh, with your boy Curry. Mm. Hold on, this ain't LeBron. This is Stephen yes, D'Angelo Steph Russell. Yes, yes, Stephen D'Angelo Russell. Easy work. Your bitch ass on the court. Oh, now you mad? Now you mad, man? Y'all say what y'all want to say, bro. Who are you talking to? Talking to you. <laughs> so my bad. It was D'Angelo Russell. Yeah. And Steph Curry, and they was going back and forth. Obviously, yeah. he on the, he was on the bench talking to Steph Curry. I don't know why, but hey, if you in the game, anybody get talked to, and Curry hit that shot and say, "Get your bitch ass on that court, boy, mm. boy, boy." And they won the game. He Line got a little bad rage. Boy, boy. <laughs> Line it up, boy, boy. Man, listen. One thing about it, Steph, like, he's that guy. That 
you're, you're that guy, man. You're that, you're, you're that guy. What they use? That guy fucks. <laughs> <laughs> that guy right there, bro. He's a motherfucker, bro. He got a little beige rage in him. Like, to the light skin. Off the court, that ain't where you want to try. Yeah. Or that's what you, where you will want, want to try. try. Catch him at you a put, grocery store. You, you, you put a basketball in his hand. Hey. You put a hoop around his vicinity. Hey. And, bruh. Get the fuck out of his way. I ain't going to throw the ones with you, but no, I'll go one-on-one -on -one no. with you. But while he on that court, uh -huh. shh, shh, if I was a team, <laughs> shut up. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he was, he was on that. And you know, it's just, it's just in the game. It's just, you know, shit talking happens. That just was one of the ones that just got caught on camera. Mm -hmm. It's so much shit talking going on in the given game that people don't even know. Yeah. But oh my God, to have a, a full point play, that bitch didn't even touch an orange. So yeah, point at him. He mm. pointed at so I made sure. I'm talking you. Know, I'm talking you. To you. you dig I'm what I'm talking saying? Yo, what? you talking about? Got to my. And then look, you know, it's, it's levels to it. And levels. Hey, play, playing some good basketball. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Let's not get beside ourselves. Uh huh. Now. That is arguably the best uh -huh. shooter this game has ever ever seen. seen. Let's just keep it in perspective. Keep it being. You have been playing some good basketball. But, bruh. <laughs> but, bruh. He may go through a little funk here now and then, but, bruh, ever. We talking about Reggie Miller, Ray Allen. Mull like, bruh. Yeah. He shoots. He's sharpshooter. Ever. Forever. Like, damn. This guy is, yeah, he's is guy. great. Yeah. Here we go. Third down. Cam approved. Boogie approved. Fashion edition. See what we got. Man, they got some hats out here, Cam, but they mm. made in marble. Marble for doors. See what they're looking like. In case you're wondering, that bitch full marble right there. White Carrara. It ain't American, but hell. American made. What's going on? Shit ain't a Mashika. It ain't. But would you do a marble hat? Marble? Marble. Yeah, if it's Mashika. Heavy to head, though, where's the crowd? <laughs> But that shit is heavy. If it ain't, but look, can you zoom in? Can you see that? Hold on. Damn. This one, I got one. The top. Zoom right there. Yeah, that. That much right shit there. go right there. Damn, my damn thing came out. <laughs> God, it, it don't about. matter. The band's still in there. The band is booming. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? I'm going to hit and got it out. You know, this hat about five What's the craziest now? thing you probably have put on a hat? All my hats, like Berto creates everything. I remember you was putting them knives in the hats at one time, too. Until I went and, and, and flew international and by got locked gotcha. up. Gotcha. 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 Hold on. I mean, they had to put that shit through that damn <laughs> screening. Motherfuckers said, hold on. What's this? <laughs> well, they get to talking in their own language. Their language, boy. Shit. So, whoa, 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 whoa. Ah! What was it? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what'd you say? <laughs> Motherfucker said, hey, amigo, um, this night you, you can't take. I said, man, fuck that, not here. Shit, you yeah, okay, good. Adios, amigo. I said, bro, I do not want to get stuck <laughs> At on At first, you was like, uh, it's decoration. Hey, it's not real. He's talking no, no this is real. Huh? I, start, I started getting him on the like, <laughs> yeah, thinking, yeah, thinking, uh, mucho negro. Um, <laughs> see, back up, back up. Man, please. Man, man come on, man. East and west. I'm like, oh, 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 this is serious. Here, take that, <laughs> that shit. shit. Oh. Like, fast. I don't need it. I'll get another one. <laughs> but all that shit cool until you got to go through TSA. Okay. And then they gonna get they gonna they gonna come get you politely. Gotcha. Get you. <laughs> Ain't that Spanish? Get you. <laughs> Oh, me go, me go. No, you're not gonna make that flight. No, nah, you ain't gonna make that one. with that. You stay for a couple more hours. Here we go. Next clip. And somebody did somebody grandma like this. Why they do grandma? Not with the he he elevens. That ain't even right, my guy. Count your days. There's been another sighting. Bro, it's been another sighting catch a day. It ain't even the right mic. No. You're the Michael Jackson at the Michael Jordan. No, bro. They said that they was going to do it. <laughs> going to drop an exclusive collection of Larsa Pippins. <laughs> them them Larsas, man. No, no. Them ain't them damn, hey, the MJ I fuck with, 
He didn't make them, man. He didn't make the glow in the docks. Nah, man. Nah, not them LA gear collabs. <laughs> them some LA gear. Nah, bro. Nah, I want to be like mine. Them, them, them Larses, bro. They said they was going to come out of the exclusive collection of Larses. <laughs> That's the first look. Oh, my but God. As far as Michael Jordan, uh -huh. him, North Carolina, nah, he wouldn't even dare. <laughs> Next clip. And we got the Joker, the Joker wear Prada, fly guy. Just a little slow, a little bop. A little tailored pants with a black, you know, Prada jacket. So this is the thing that people don't really understand about fashion in the NBA. Like, okay. it's essential that you have a personal shopper because I guarantee you, like, Joker don't wear no size 11 or 12. That's mm -hmm. like an 18, 19 Shoot. Size shoe. Like, that's why a lot of basketball players, volleyball players, like super-sized players, they just wear the – Super-sized Like, they player. just got to wear what make what was comfortable for them because clothes isn't created to appease to them. Clothes ain't so, created Like, you can, you can really appreciate this look mm -hmm. because the pants, you know how much fabric that is? Yeah. Shit, the coat, then you got the, the, the I'm proud of yous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Let me play it again. Let me see the strat. Let me the strat. see the strat. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, the strat of everything now. Especially, yeah. you know, you get you a... <laughs> little what? You know, just a little pan away, you know, the little point. You need all that. But it's an appreciation coming from a fashionable person like myself. Okay. Where you see a guy who's tall in stature or big, mm -hmm. he can still put that shit on. So, shout out to you. But, but even for you, like when you go shopping... How would you shop? Like, if they had something in your size, would you buy a lot of it because you don't know when you're going to see it again? Or Man, what? Shopper's Code, Shopper's Code for me is if they don't have it in stock, I don't get it. I don't, I'm not the ordering type. Hey, hey, we can order it. We can have it shipped to you. Same. Yeah. Like, nah, baby, that's just a fashion guy saying this ain't for you. Yeah. Not at this time. But have you seen something? You're like, man, I got to have it. No, no, I, I'm a, I shop for pieces. I don't okay. shop for outfits mm -hmm. like i like the piece like i'll buy some some shoes probably some pants at another place or a shirt at another place and then a jacket or some type of details from bandanas or ribbon or bambushka scarf or you know different pendants or patches or feathers sweat man. like it don't like whatever it is like rings it don't matter bro like phew. It's in you, bro. You got to think about it. Like, it's you, in you. You can take me to Walmart. You can take me to Payless. And you're going to get and, it in. And I promise you, I'm going to come out there stepping with the best of them. We got to do a day in the life with Cam at Payless, Walmart, thrift they store. Had a, they had a um, a prank was Palesse. <laughs> Palesse. Y'all playing too much. Look, Palesse. They was trying to show people's eye for fashion is so fucked up that they use Payless. And they was asking people what they thought. Oh, my God, it's just so luxury. Mm -hmm. Man, that shit was $17, man. Feel me? It's like, in you. It's in you, it's bro. It's in you. You know, you like y'all look goofy wearing Louis Vuitton from head to toe. I fuck with Pharrell. Appreciate his art artistry. But, bro, just because he done came out with a bag, you don't not got to go get all the bags with the shirt and the pants. And dressing and the like dog. the mannequin. All right, come on. That ain't you. That's a mannequin. Come on, man. Come on. You the mannequin, it. man. Just one piece. It won't, don't one overdo enough. it. Don't and overdo don't be the dude like, you got the, I got the Dior Dior. Then I got the Louis Vuitton. And then I got the Gucci. Then I got the Fendi. Like, bro, that ain't fashion. You walking billboard. Like, you an idiot. Stupid. You look like a goofy. You look like and I'm goofy. sorry if I had to be the one to tell you. Damn. Like, bro, that I ain't fashion. Too, bro. That's just, you got a lot of money. You got access to a lot. And... That's cool. If that's that's how you want to rock, cool. But how I judge fashion, it's like, bro, put it on on an equal scale. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Next clip. Jordan Clarkson. They say he putting it on with the oversized look. He's one of those guys. He is. He's one of those guys. He can in put it fashion, on. for sure. Jordan Clarkson. He like that. Yeah. Would he be in your like yes. top ones in NBA right yeah, now? Yeah, for sure. 
Mm. Like, like it's just the, the body of work though. It ain't just this year. this year. It's like when he was in L.A. Like he was putting in that Utah, work. Like so he can like, dress, like, bro. Motherfucker been fresh. I, I'm, I'm the dude on Instagram, bro. I, I create my own pictures in my own photo gallery. Like I take screenshots just to say, like I like how he wore his glasses, or I like how she did this, or I like how he did, you know, wore his socks right there. Like it's so much that you could pull from so many different things that. You know, you just draw inspiration. Feel me? But do you do, like, he got the oversized. Like, which one you think you mostly go? Do you do oversized sometimes? Do you do the tight fit nah, mostly? I ain't really been a fan of the oversized. Okay. I'm more fitted. Um, European. Oh, European cut. European cut. You did. You know, bucket, you know, tuck in your shirt, you know what I'm saying, at times. But it still got to be layers, though, even when it's hot outside. You know, we walking into spring season, you feel me? But you still got to have them layers, layers. So you going to still put that sweater on if it's... Not the sweater, but it got to be cashmere. cashmere. Oh! Break it down there, but Come hold on. on. It got to be what? It's breathable. Ooh. Feel me? You said cashmere? Yeah, cotton, like, okay. you know. You ain't breathable. Like, come on. Okay. Linen, baby. Oh, okay. Like, what are you talking about? There's layers to this, baby. There's come layers on. to it. You know what I'm saying? Linen draws so my balls don't get high. Uh, <laughs> yeah, balls are high. Yeah, owns a team. That's, that's Jay-Z, by the way. But okay. For some of y'all. Here down. we go. Fourth down. Fan questions of the week. What we got, Pig? We got a few fan questions. Let's go to Michi. Mitchy, how many hats do you own? Yeah. A lot. <laughs> if All Mashika. If you had a number, do you owe, is it upward of 100? Upward of? Easily. I done left hats places and had them recreated. Damn. Yeah. So up Shout out to Berto, man. Berto. Omar and Leela. You know, Mashika hats, bro. Like, they, I mean, uh, they pumping out. That fire. Uh, just. This man don't miss. Yeah, he don't. You know what I'm saying? And the quality there. Like, this hat is literally, like, five years old, bro. Like, uh. Yeah, I had this hat for some time, too. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. And look, look, listen to it. You, it got something to it. Like, it ain't. It ain't going to fall apart. No, bro. Like, no. And yeah. you know it's going to stay on your head. It got to stay. It ain't going to go nowhere at all. <laughs> this is handcrafted, custom to your nappy ass head. Uh huh. <laughs> Shit. Here we go. Next question. We had a weird guy, huh? Named Kent Heckle said, "If you were a plant and someone sprayed you with water, would you moan a little bit?" What? What? <laughs> would I moan? If you was a plant and somebody sprayed you with water, would you moan a little bit? The okay, fuck Kent, let me shit. tell you something. I know exactly who the fuck this is. Kent, <laughs> stay out of our inboxes for fucking questions. Kent, shout out to Kent. Kent yeah. creates all our, he's our YouTube analyst that is really, uh, yeah. <laughs> fuck you, Kent. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so on the sports side, DMC said, what did Cam and Kelvin Benjamin say to each other before the Buffalo Car uh, Carolina game a few years ago? Mm. Man, I've been trying to reach out to Benji, though. Because, mm. like, that was my dog, bro. Like, I remember when he first got drafted, Mike Shula, the officer coordinator at the time, was like, he's your guy. Yeah. And we got him because there was a lot of similarities. And I think from Benji's standpoint, he was hurt, just like I was hurt. But what he didn't know is I had nothing to do with him getting traded. Mm -hmm. And And I know who he – who he was, you know, he tried to, he took a lot of things personal. And it was like, yo, he didn't know, like, bro, I was hurt. Like, that was a guy who I confided in and we would, you know, I, I, I met his mom, rest in peace, his daughter. Uh, and it was just like, we, we had built an alliance, you know what I'm saying, where I needed him, he needed me. And with our dog, um, Joe Webb. And when they got traded, bro, it was just one of them things like, damn, bro, like y'all ain't even gonna tell me. Mm. It just happened. I found out like everybody else did, you know what I mean? And I guess he took it personal where I think the, it was said in the, in the media, like I finally got a good quarterback to kind of throw to me. And I took it personal. So I'm not the type of person, bro, that's gonna go to Twitter to, Ribble off like my emotions at that time. Yeah, 
And I knew I was going to see him. I was like, yo, like, what's the deal? You know what I'm saying? And it was two individuals who are alphas. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like he was trying me or I was trying him. It was just like, bro, I was just trying to get some understanding, bro. Like, I know you. Yeah. See what I'm saying? You could have called me. Like, bro, you could have called. You could have said. Because I could have. I didn't want to play with his name. You know what I'm saying? In his absence. So that's what people saw. You know what I'm saying? I still. I wish, like. That's a person that I know his circumstances growing up that I know the importance of coaching. Mm. I know the importance of a, of a healthy environment. I know the importance of, you know, just allowing players to, to be them. You know, a guy from Belle Glade, Florida, Muck City. And coming into a situation in the NFL where it's like, this is the first time you got your own, your own car, your own condo, your own house, your own everything. And there are a lot of people are looking towards you to do that. You know, he had a lot of success early. His rookie year, he had 1,000 yards. And it was just, you know, managing that, the level of keep getting better and better and better. So, you know, that's it wasn't nothing too crazy. It was just like, yo, I was just really trying to find out, like, what's up, what's like, up? What's up bro? You good? Is you straight? Yeah. You feel me? Because – we ain't never not been able to talk. And we done had some uncomfortable. We done came nose to nose before, before when nobody even knew. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it, it was one of those situations in particular, like Ted, or Ted again pulled up to my house, bro. It was like, bro, hey, bomb. He from, he from Cleveland. <laughs> you got to fix that. You got a little raspy little voice. You got to fix that, bro. You got to fix it. Like, <laughs> fix it. I don't care. Fix it. And I was just the OG. He was like, bro, like, no. Nah, like, y'all... Both of y'all are my little brothers, you know what I'm saying? And that's just how men fix things. Yeah. By talking. You got some issues, let's talk about it. Yeah. However you feel, cool. And if you feel disrespected, speak on that. Mm-hmm. And and he he just wasn't talking. So I approached him. And y'all ain't talked ever since. No. Nah. And that's sad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause we've built a relationship that I would have thought he would have been in my life for the rest of my life. And I love to kind of, you know, reconnect with, with Benji. Like, that's a, a person who, like, that's my little nigga, bro. Like, uh, and we eye to eye. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> Not my little big nigga. You know what I mean? You so my nigga if you don't get no bigger. Me being a fan of him in college, I remember betting big. That's when, because he had the game winning catch in Florida State. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, damn, that's a big motherfucker, boy. Golly. And because they had beat Auburn that year uh-huh. in the national championship. So I've always been a fan of him. And then having that opportunity to be his teammate and then learning more, you know, about him personally and training with him and working out with him and going through those dog days in camp and throughout the season, bro. You know, it was just something that you don't you don't get those opportunities back. That's what you miss most about the game. Yeah. So. Well, next up, you got Drew said, Cam, what's the hardest you've been hit in your life? Uh, Brian Arakbo, rookie year. Um, he was with the Redskins, bro. He hit me. He was running. Side. Nah, I was in the pocket, bro. He just knocked your ass out the pocket. Shit. And you know when you it, it's the ones you don't see. Uh huh. I just couldn't brace for it. Yeah, but stayed down for some time. But shit, I got back up. I finished. When, when you get hit like that and you just like you land and you like. Damn. What are you thinking, You're doing bro? like a, a self-diagnostic check. <laughs> it's like, okay, Break it down, bro. My eyes blinking. Blink, blink, blink. My fingers. My toes. My toes. Oh, I'm paralyzed. Oh, they got my toes. <laughs> my knee. Okay, cool. My nuts. Hold on. My nuts were all right. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. My nuts <laughs> still there. You know what I mean? I'm straight. So, <laughs> yeah. All right, so next one up, Jared J. Rock said, "What opponent brought the best out of you when you played against him during the season?" Ah, uh, I don't know, man. Back then, when you had the NFC South between the New Orleans Saints and the Atlanta Falcons, bro, mm, that was a like them fights was a little different. You yeah, know what I'm saying? 
you know, New Orleans was they was real chippy. It was loud in there too. They fans first in yeah, the, the play. players was real kind of like gritty. They didn't want you to celebrate. They didn't want you know. They slapped the ball out your hands. You know when you trying to give it back to like just petty. Mm -hmm. In Atlanta, they was just trying to be bullies. You feel yeah. me? Like you know, punking me, bro. Like we gonna get some understanding early. Yeah. Feel me? So I just enjoyed those type of battles, bro. Like, and then obviously Seattle, that was an that was like a. A divisional game. We played them so much, you know what mm -hmm. I mean. But yeah, but was you ever trying to bully people like, or set the tone? It's like, man, even if you running, I can run out of bounds. But look, you don't want this game. Never. You never. No, I'm trying to set the tone. That's what in, I'm saying. Instead in of going out of bounds, you like pregame, during show. the game, all that shit, bro. Like it's on site. I, you know what I'm here for. I ain't got no fucking homeboys out here, and you damn sure ain't my fucking homeboy wearing them colors. Oh. Like that was just my. But you said tripping fool. I'm like hell no, nah, little bitty ass boy. You said tripping. Boy, let me tell you something. Talk to him, bro. Talk to him. Bro, bro, let this machine come off now. <laughs> 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 well, I get with you now, but that's the thing. And this is my favorite thing to say, like, because sometimes them shit talking does get a little personal and get a little wild. Yeah. I said, fuck, boy, if you say that shit, if you feel that, that same way, say it to me after the game. Because uh -huh. that's how I really will respect you. If you say all that shit after the game while we dapping up, oh, man, big bro, like, ain't no fucking big, big bro. bro. So if you won't say it to me after the game, shut the fuck up. Uh, and you'll be saying that all in the game. That's the old me. <laughs> you been reborn, reborn, born again. Listen, I'm trying to get on ABC. Man, come care. on now. We're trying to get some of that barefoot bag. I'm trying to get some of that barefoot bag, man. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to politic. I'm just trying to I'm put my name in the hat. Politic with That's all I'm trying to do. You know, I can't show that side. That's the old book. That's the old book. It's the new revival. You know what I'm saying? I'm just sitting here just trying to say, listen, if y'all really want to have somebody that got a lot of range and variety. Uh-huh. Baskin Robin. You know, give me an opportunity to audition for the late night show. Mm. Ain't, you know what I mean, hostile. Okay. For the people. That's the face of America right there. Say cheese. Ding. There you go. Say <laughs> Oh, this controversial right here, Pat. No, look. Newton's Law. Because uh -huh. we were talking about this off air. Take your emotions out of it. Cause nah, you was, ain't from where I'm from, and you ain't from where I'm from. Let me tell you something. But which state produces the best athlete talent per capita? The state of Georgia is the most athletic state. California, somebody gonna say California, California. cool. Somebody gonna say Florida too. But take IMG out of it. Okay, that's a boarding school. People from other states go to. I that don't count. I'm talking about born and raised. raised in that state where it's real high school. Mm -hmm. Where you from? Georgia. Georgia. So you go on Georgia. T t bro, Georgia. Let's so just, hold on, hold on. Let's just keep Cam it. Newton is saying Georgia is the most talented homegrown state in the United States. Yes. It's no. not even close. You got to explain. I'm going to tell you. When you're talking about, they're going to say, okay, the speed state. Okay. But what about y'all don't got no offensive linemen? Y'all don't mm. got no defensive linemen. What are you talking about? You can't have a whole team full of skinnies. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with the featherweights, bro. You know what I'm saying? The featherweights still but get I'm down. I'm talking about from top to bottom, bro, from middle linebacker, safety, cornerback, quarterback, running back, receiver, mm -hmm. point guard, shooting guard. Oh, now you moving to the hardwood. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. You know what I'm saying? No, okay. Small four, like, bro. I ain't, I ain't even do my research with baseball. But, bro, it, it would still be what it's going to be. Per capita. Not okay. boarding schools, not, you know, extended schools, prep schools. Your high school was there. You're from there. You're, you're born there. Born and bred. That state produces the most talent. The state of Georgia. The state of Georgia. Georgia. It's, it's on your mind. Georgia. I mean, can we go on? My list, my list goes like this. So, so talk, In the talk last about. five years. We talking last five years. Last five, let's just keep it a buck for five years. For, for five let's, years strong. Cool. Okay. What state has produced more talent? Just in basketball, this, this is just a discussion in basketball and football. Mm -hmm. All right? Football. Trayvon Walker. Number one overall pick. 
AJ Terrell. Number 16th overall pick. Justin Fields. Number 11th overall pick. Trevor Lawrence. Number one overall. Will Anderson. Number three overall. Jameer Gibbs. That's 12th overall. First round. All first round. All first round. Oh, we ain't talking about it if it ain't first round. And we got Roquan Smith. <laughs> he number eighth overall. And Andrew Thomas, fourth overall. Top to, top to bottom. Now, when we go to Florida, it's just going to be skill positions. Yeah, wide right receivers, running back. Yeah, yeah, that's cute. That's the cute stuff. That's Y'all come on up here to Georgia. Get smash around the house. Mouth. Smash mouth. Smash mouth. But, you know, if I had to. Smash mouth. Smash mouth. I'll go get my receiver from Florida, though. Don't get me wrong. Shoot. But who the fastest in the NFL? Where he from? Oh, boy, that just ran? No. Oh, Cheetah. Where he from? Where he from? <laughs> he from Georgia? <laughs> Georgia. Let me check his birth certificate. Georgia. That boy country, boy. You see how that boy run, boy? Yeah, boy, that right. Boy, he used to run with no shoes on. I'm trying to tell you, boy. That boy, look. It ain't too much things that he could do, but the boy can run. Uh-huh. Now, yeah. basketball. What you got, pig? Man, Anthony Edwards. Ah. Number one overall pick. <laughs> Jabari Smith, ah. number three overall pick. Come on. Scoot Henderson, mm. number three overall pick. Colin Sexton. Even though somebody's going to say Colin Sexton, what was that, 2018? That was a uh, five year. That yeah. was right on the cusp. But at eighth overall pick. Yeah, right, come on. Isaac Okoro, mm. fifth overall pick. And Wendell Carter Jr., seventh what overall pick. What are we pick. really talking about? Now, to the viewer, get your emotions out of it. I want to hear these comments. Like, Get get your emotions out of it. Cause I was mad. I was in my feelings. You was, but what I you gonna mad. say, man? We got Michael Jordan. Jordan. Man, that was thirty years Jerry ago. Jerry Stackhouse. Jerry Stack. Forty years ago. John Wall. Chris Paul. Fifty years ago. Yeah. What are you yeah. talking about, man? man? We got ballers in Carolina. Though. You used to. Man, it's all good. Just, Amari Collins. No, nah, hell no, nah, Peggy. No, <laughs> no. Nah, we see what you do, man. <laughs> if you're under the age of forty and you need any extra support. <laughs> To just go play a regular game of pickup, that's elbow brace, <laughs> knee sleeve, knee brace. Why I got a head on the Ankle knee? brace. Like, bruh, come on. Man, come shout on. out to all the knee brace, knee brace ballers out there. All knee, the brace knee brace bandits out all there. The knee brace bandits. You part of the Peggy crew, man. man. You know no. what I'm saying? Hell nah, that shit weak as I'm hell. I'm a knee brace baller, baby. I'm a knee <laughs> brace baller. <laughs> they need ankle braces, bro. You used to have them back then. That was just fashion and style. Now I done, I done matured and knee braced it. Check it out. Peggy. <laughs> I moved already, up, baby. I moved up to the We are Got a knee brace on me. You are 111 pounds soaking wet. And yeah. you mean to tell How me. I drop weight. Them little bit ass ligaments Man. need some. Because I got them Kyrie crossovers. Yeah. So they might pop out of place. Oh. And shit, I need my knee brace. Brace yourself, brother. Brace that yourself. stupid, Peggy. <laughs> Right, come on. Then back to the topic, man. The topic is what the topic is, Peggy. We know with your whole aesthetic on the court, you can't be from Georgia <laughs> wearing some goofy ass shit like that. I mean, bro, Anthony Edwards, dog, Jabbar, dog, Scoot, dog, cops, dog, and not the ones that's up next. We got uh, Falaje, mm -hmm. Stefan Castle, Isaiah Collier. What are we talking about? Yeah. Georgia, we on, baby. And you ain't even really got into football. Football is like, just ridiculous. Like, what are we talking about? It's yeah, ridiculous. I ain't even going to count. I want to see what the comments of people saying. Bro, listen. They ain't going to be saying that. Keep your emotions out of it. Matter of fact, if Florida was so great, how many Heisman trophies they got? Mm. Come on, bro. Just keeping it a buck. I'm he pissing some people off. Hit me with your best shot. I'm pissing some people off. Listen, in the state of Georgia, bro, we breed a different type of beast. Mm. Mm. No. Mm. Them, that, bro, that shit ain't no damn hell cat. That shit is a dude. You got a Travis Hunter. But he originally from Florida, but he, he, he went to Georgia. Well, he went to high school. High school in Georgia, yeah. What are we really talking about right here? He got his name where, son. <laughs> it's like they say Gucci man and Jesus. Like they not originally, bro. They got their name, name in, in Georgia. Come on, bro. Stop playing. They Georgia from Georgia. Georgia bread, Georgia fan. We, man, man, we, we taking all good, good talent, uh -huh. and we'll we'll nurture you up in the right way. We'll train you up in the right way. I'm trying to tell you that Georgia clay ain't nothing to be played with. Come on, bro. 
So yeah, tell me what you want to think. Tell me how you feel. Cool. And if I'm wrong, next episode, Peggy, I will publicly apologize. Yeah. But I don't see myself apologize. We need some stats in the fan question of the week next episode. Hit Cam with the facts on which state has the best. And I can just drop the mic and just walk off, but I'm not gonna do that. Don't but do that's it. that's I just wanna leave people with a homework assignment. Okay. Who does it better than Georgia when it comes to athletes? Not just a specific type of athlete. I'm talking about athlete top to bottom. Mm. Overall. Everything. Track, tennis, football, baseball, basketball. basketball, wrestling. Like, bro, it's the, like we the whole package, bro. What are we talking about? Per capita. Per, I mean, dog, we're talking about a state that's not that big. Mm -hmm. California, you got so much space. Florida, so much space. Texas. Even more space. Everything bigger in Texas. That's cool, bro. I can fit two Georgias in the state of Texas. Really three. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about three Georgias, what would that look like? Ooh. Come on, bro. Come on. This is the real Wakanda. Oh. <laughs> this is you really talking well, about. Like cut up, it is, it's Welcome in Atlanta. To Atlanta. Yeah. Atlanta. Welcome to Wakanda. Uh, Shout out to Chadwick Bozeman. Rest in peace. So as we end things here, fourth and one, man, catch us each and every week. Uh -huh. Same space, same place. Come on, get you a taste. With the same face. Yeah! I see yeah. what you did, Ted. Do I find booming? I mean, like Metro. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? So make sure you like. Uh-huh. Make sure you like. Uh huh. Let make sure you like. Uh -huh. Make sure you share. Yes, and with this episode alone, make sure you comment. You got to. But most of all, make sure you subscribe. Mm -hmm. One time for the one time, baby. One finger. Uh huh. One pinky. One thumb. All together. One, one love. love. Yeah, dig. Yeah.